This is Tax Pro Nation, the home of independent tax professionals. Find community, maximize your earnings, and live life on your own terms. I'm your host, Jeff Dolan, Vice President of Pronto Tax School. And I'm your co-host, Andy Fry, founder and CEO of Pronto Tax School. My grandfather started Pronto Income Tax in Los Angeles back in 1965. My father and I carried on the family business and became tax business entrepreneurs. I launched Pronto Tax School because I know that given the right training and tools, you too can experience the freedom the tax business can offer. I grew up with a dad who wasn't working all the time, who had time to spend with his five children, who could take us to the beach on a Tuesday if that's what he wanted to do. The tax business can be an ideal business for people who want that kind of freedom, but it's got to be done purposefully in order to work that way. And that's why we're here, to help you navigate your journey as an independent tax professional. Don't do it alone. Join the nation. Let's jump in. Welcome to episode five, where we will be discussing step five of the nine steps of the Pronto Path, which is our map of the journey you will take as an independent tax pro. In this opening series, we are tackling one step per episode. Step five is called acceleration. Earn a profit that makes a meaningful impact for your personal freedom and lifestyle. Good morning, Andy. Good morning. Well, I'm really excited to talk through this step uh, because the last time we we were prepping for this show, I was laughing so hard at these stories (laughs) because you just came up with just gold. (laughs) Just... Hilarious story. So I'm looking forward to this. Oh, no pressure though. I hope I can <laughs> uh, repeat some of that comedy. But yeah, this is a, a really interesting step in in, um, in your tax career and if you're a tax business owner in your business where you get that that speed, you know, that, and, and speed, it's kind of like um, in sports when you move up a level and the game is just that much faster. Yeah. So it's, it's playing at that faster speed and there are so many interesting things that can happen when you're you know when you're going up a speed and now you're um you're just dealing with a different situation so i'm excited to to do this episode and um i think a lot of people are going to relate to some of the experience that i'll be able to share nice you're not drinking any coffee this morning I already had, uh, <laughs> it already had, since I had to wake up extra early this morning uh, due to, you know, we, we changed up the schedule a little bit. Um, I had one of those uh, red eyes, which is like an espresso inside of a coffee. So it's Yeesh. like a, yeah, it's pretty serious. Wow. So I'm did you do that up. after you went kayaking? Uh, yeah, that was, uh, so I went kayaking <laughs> yesterday. Um, I, I tried to do some recreation this, this weekend, um, even though I was still thinking a lot about, our tax business and the tax school and how we can help our, our members, um, you know, have a great tax season, which we're in tax season right now. I also tried to dedicate some time. I didn't try to, I did dedicate some time to, uh, you know, getting out on the beach. It was such a beautiful weekend, getting out on the water. You know, you're allowed to do that, right? It was a Sunday yesterday. <laughs> You're allowed and, to rest. <laughs> and, and that's what's funny about, about the acceleration stage is when you feel like you're moving so, so quickly. I think, for instance, our tax uh, school business has been in the acceleration phase for probably about 12 months, 18 months now. Oh, wow. And I feel that you know, getting this podcast together with your leadership on it and just so many good things start happening when you're accelerating and you, you really start to see the fruits of your labor. And at the same time, though, you, you do have to consciously dedicate because you're exactly right. Like to me, to work four or five hours on a Sunday is just normal. And to other people, they're like, Horrible. that's crazy. Yeah, like that's not <laughs> cool at all. And then you, you kind of realize at a certain point, um, you know, which I think we'll talk about in this episode is why are we going faster and faster? Like where are we trying to get to? Right. And, and so, um, you know, I'm sure we'll, we'll get into that as we go along. Yeah, so so this step is exciting, right? This is kind of the uh, w- one of the milestone steps, uh, if you will, definitely, because you're you're making good money, uh, you you have the time, right? You're starting to, to have that that lifestyle freedom, and some people go different directions, right? So we're going to talk in this episode about the positives and the negatives. Some people wheels come off; <laughs> they're they're going so fast that the next step is stabilization, right? But this step is acceleration where we're, we're going light speed. Some people crash, some people pull out. So it's going to be great. 
But, but in this step, you're starting to see the fruits of your labor and, and you're starting to see kind of where the future can go. Uh, you're, you're making real money. Uh, it, you're, you're getting that feeling that it's working, right? Yeah, which is huge. And when you come to that elevation step, which we talked about last episode, sometimes it's a surprise that you can raise prices and still get more clients. Mm. And so that would be like a hallmark of this acceleration phase is like, wow, I had my doubts that people were going to still want to work with me because I doubled my prices. But then you see I'm actually getting more business. And so the math is starting to work in your favor. And, you know, in this show, we talk uh, about people with a, a variety of different goals in the tax business. Like maybe you're looking to build supplemental income. Um, you know, maybe just work, work seasonally versus building a big business. I mean, people have different goals, but um, what is that meaningful profit to you that enables you um, to kind of live that tax business dream, that tax career dream of making really good money while still having control of and flexibility with your time? I think no matter who, why you got into the tax business, that's going to be a major uh, part of it. And so the acceleration phase is like, oh, I'm actually headed in that direction. This is amazing. <laughs> it's exciting. Right? Yeah, I mean, it yeah. feels great. So you're saying really find your why and remind yourself of your why at this step. Yeah, because you're going to, once you're accelerating, people see that. They see that you're getting this momentum. It's going to create new opportunities and, and new things are going to start coming at you again with a lot more speed. Uh, so, you know, just imagine that you're on an open road and instead of going 40, you're going 100. You know, objects are going to come in and you're going to have, be able to make, uh, need to make quicker decisions. And, you know, um, there's other consequences if you make one decision versus another. So you're just playing at a different speed. And um, you definitely, you know, number one thing that I've learned and from, you know, having successes at this speed and also having uh, things that didn't go perfectly right is uh, keeping focused on what am I trying to achieve with my, with my business or with my career? Right. What does success look like for me? I, I know we talked a little bit uh, last week about kind of the dollar values, like wh- what dollar value you want and, and growth for growth's sake. Do we want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's uh, in terms of the intersection between money and happiness well, people say that they've done these studies of, you know, once you're making a certain amount of money, whether you make a lot more than that, it doesn't necessarily increase your happiness. But if you're making less than that, you're constantly stressed out. And so, you know, for the tax business can be like that, you know, where you start out in your tax career, you're paying your dues, you know, you're not making a ton of money necessarily. And then you start to make good money and your mentality can really change because you can, you know, it's, it's just like people that don't, come up, don't grow up with money or something like that. There's different attitudes that we have that can, you know, basically infect us with greed for, for, you know, for lack of a better phrase. And, uh, and that, and that can have some really, um, you know, negative consequences. So when you, are, when you know what the numbers mean to you, uh, so like, for instance, just so we're not talking about pure generalities is, uh, for me, like one of my big goals uh, at this phase of my my career was to become debt free, so to not have debt, including your house, um, uh, well, excluding your house, yeah, excluding my house. So gotcha. you know, working up towards that, but but not having other you know uh, carrying credit card debt and um, student loans and right. all that kind of stuff. And so when I was in the process of accelerating our, our business, and you know. Uh, thank God we were able to quadruple the size of our business in, in um, five years, uh, you know, working with my dad. And um, what does that mean for me? A big thing was to feel like, okay, I'm taking risk on my business by growing my business and, and adding new offices, adding new team members, all that. The result that I'm going to get from that, because I'll be able to make these other numbers instead of the numbers that I was making, is that I can not have debt. And so that was a big thing for me, you know, with, um, you know, being able to get married and start a family. And that's something that is, is a big why, because I, that, I don't like having debt because it could stress me out, you know? Uh, but at the same time, like once you're in that process and you feel like you're going 100 miles an hour, there's other things that you don't anticipate 
to where you don't want to be like that, like Moby Dick, you know, like obsession <laughs> level, you know, where, where, I, where I've gotten to. So I think for, for our listeners, you know, every, anybody that's listening, what does the math mean for you? You're starting to accelerate. You're starting to make that meaningful profit. Why is it meaningful? Is it right. because you're going to take two vacations instead of one with your family? Is it because you're saving up to buy a house? Like, what does the money really mean to you? That's good. Yeah, because otherwise you're, you're, you're going to fall into that greed pattern where more and more and more is all you want and you don't really have a reason for it. It's not grounded in anything, right? And so that's where you start getting, uh, the wheels start coming off. <laughs> uh, and I think we can uh, talk about some of that uh, in a little bit. Are you somewhere in your tax career and feeling lost with what to do next? Do you sometimes wish you had a map to show you your next step to reach your full potential as a tax professional? Here at Pronto Tax School, we have developed that guide. We call it the Pronto Path, and we want to share it with you for free. Go to taxpronation.com slash path right now. You know, we're talking a lot about kind of starting your own tax business, uh, tax preparation business. Uh, is this episode only for entrepreneurs or employees as well? Yeah, that's something that I'm glad that we touched on in the uh, show preparation. Well, I'm happy we do preparation too. <laughs> I got to give you credit for that. <laughs> you guys know sometimes I would just show up and try to freestyle, but hopefully you guys are get, getting away from this. Like, wow, these guys did prepare and have some kind of outline <laughs> to make the best use of your time because there, there's a lot of other ways that you could be using your time. You know, and saying like, like you could be using your time other ways too, Jeff. So we got to make the most of it to, you know, get the most impact for our listeners. And I think if you're listening and you're not a tax business owner, you're an employee, does this acceleration step apply to you? Absolutely. It 100% does. And so let me, let me give you an idea of why that is because, and, and why we wanted to address that early in this episode so that people don't tune out and say, hey, this is only for tax business owners, is look, if you're uh, growing your tax career at a company, understanding the nature of the tax business of being a tax professional, you are very similar to an entrepreneur if you're dealing with clients. Now, if you're doing like admin work or something like that, you don't have any client you know, client-facing work, so to speak. That's a little different uh, scenario. But most tax businesses, individual tax businesses, are between one and four team members. So just think about that. If you're an employee and, and you're in an office that has four people, five people, three people, realize how important it is that for you to de- develop your own career and your own earning power is one of the most important things, probably the most important thing for the success of the overall business. Right. And so this is a huge step of you should, you should still be owning the fact of I'm accelerating my career. And, um, and, and there's a few th- uh, practical things that we can talk about uh, of how to kind of negotiate and navigate that. But I would start by saying, absolutely, this acceleration phase is um, so important for the tax business owners and also for your team members. So if you're sitting there as a tax business owner saying, hey, should I share this with one of my team members, highly recommend that you do because that person accelerating is going to do so much for your business. And I've seen it and experienced it firsthand. And that's, kind of, that's what makes it fun. At that point, you're an entrepreneur, right? You're inside the organization acting as an entrepreneur. Yeah. And, uh, and you're almost in that sales growth mode, right? You're, you have your own clients. Even though you're working for a bigger company, you have your own clients. You're servicing those clients. You're growing. You're... you're uh, getting referrals, right? You're doing all those things inside of your business. And so I think we were talking about this before where these entrepreneurs are critical to the business. Finding the right people in those roles are what's going to make the difference between success and failure, right? Because if you get somebody that comes in and they're not growth-minded, they're not entrepreneurial, they'll just hunker down with their clients and not grow. And then your business can't get to this level, right? Right. Yeah, it's in a way it's um, it's towing an anchor, you know. For, <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, and, and there's only so many anchors you can tow when you're in this acceleration phase. So we're going to talk about a lot of the HR challenges that kind of come into this phase. But just as a general framework, 
when you're building a culture of people taking ownership of their client relationships and, and growing and, and, and accelerating their own career, you have a chance for a great, great business. Um, and, and so I think it's so important. And, and you're an uh, entrepreneur yourself, you know, here. Um, you know, you're, you're an employee with us of the company, but you've had other ventures that you've done as well. So maybe you can touch on like, and we're going to actually have a whole episode where we interview another entrepreneur and see what this is all about. But I think there's a major theme for us on this podcast is encouraging among a culture of uh, people, people taking ownership, um, you know, growing client relationships, growing their revenue. What does that mean for you? Right. And, and are these folks... These entrepreneurs, are they working mostly on commission or performance-based pay? Usually. And that's something that if you are uh, taking intrapreneurial actions and you're at this step, right, where you're starting to notice, I'm accelerating. I'm getting a lot of referrals. Um, I'm adding a lot of value. And say you're on an hourly or a fixed uh, amount, we would suggest to look at that with your employer so that you can have a compensation agreement that incentivizes you to keep your momentum going. And so sometimes that's, that's something that will help other tax business owners or even employees kind of figure out how to structure something like that. Because, um, you know, if somebody's speeding up and they're making the same and they're creating more revenue, more value, most tax business owners have found that an incentive based pay plan is a huge, um, you know, factor in being able to grow their business and even add more team members. Right. So they should want to hire people that want commission-based pay or performance-based pay, right? I think so. Because at the end of the day, you are, uh, you are going to grow your own tax business based on the fact of what your team members do to grow their own um, client base. And so when you, you could do more and more tax returns yourself and, and a lot of the tax professionals do choose to kind of stay solo or just have one other person. However, if you really want to grow your business, that person's success, like if you're working here, Jeff, like your success is my success is our success. Right. And those kind of things you have to think ahead of time. Well, what would I want if that was that person? At the same time, you have to keep people accountable because you're accountable as the owner, no matter what, right. because you're right. going to be getting paid off net. Yeah. So that, that creates instant accountability. Or if there's a client problem, it's going to fall on your doorstep. How do you build accountability for other people and give them the upside of if you are intrapreneurial and you don't need to leave and go completely start your own business to indulge and enjoy that part of business, which is so awesome, why does that make sense for them? Like if you were them, what kind of pay would you like? Yeah, we talked about this before and I shared the concept of, you know, expanding your world so that everyone can get everything they want inside of it. Um, most people, when they leave a company, mostly for salespeople, it's because they're boss, right? <laughs> but you, you really wake up one day and you realize what I want is no longer possible inside of this company. I've got to look for it outside of this company. So, so as an employer, right, as the owner of your business, when you're looking for people to hire, not only do you need to find the right mindset, but you need to expand your world big enough so that they can fit inside of it. And I would say even beyond that, if you want, if you want to really be an empire building uh, company, right? And so if you give them enough opportunities to grow to everything they could possibly want, then when you interview them and whatever they say, you have a path for them, they're going to want to work there and you're going to attract the right kind of entrepreneurial mindset, growth-minded people that are going to want to grow because they're going to want to achieve their dreams inside of your company, right? You're not going to lose them when they get to this acceleration phase, they're making more money than they've ever made. And they're like, see ya, start my own company, taking all these clients, whatever, <laughs> right? You don't want them to do that. You know, you want to give them every opportunity to get everything they want inside of your world. And I think that's something, it's one of those things that I'm very passionate about. Like, like honestly, one of the best things about being a business owner, possibly the best thing for me is I feel like I could create 
opportunities for other people. And it gives me a lot of enjoyment to see people being able to do their own thing, you know, and, and be, and, and be creative and, um, and take care of customers and care about customers and, and, you know, and all those good things. And so you get very excited about that. And sometimes when you're in this acceleration phase, though, you have different interactions um, with people than you're used to having because maybe other people aren't at that same vision level that you are. Mm. Or like, like what happened with me is I could have the vision of it, but there's like at these bigger corporations and stuff that you've worked at, there's a whole pragmatic, practical side of like how that really needs to go. And that's one of the biggest things that we've been working on with this Pronto Path concept is a lot of our members and our most successful members, what you just said about your best people leaving you, right when they're just starting to be so valuable, is an epidemic in our industry. Mm. And a lot of it is related to what is the path? Like, what's the next step for me? And I think that's something that um, it's been done very well by the national tax franchises is that they have a next step of that you become a franchisee, right? Um, and so what is it for independent professionals that, you know, if you're in an office with three people and you've been, um, you know, and, and this was, this has happened to me several times where I had mentored, you know, people for numerous years and really built them up and they're doing great and making great money and all that. But when, when we need to be clear on like, well, what would be the next step for that person? And also, is this the right time for them to take that next step? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. Um, there are a lot of practical and monetary, you know, considerations to that. But I think if we recognize the problem of, of our industry is like the more that I train you and empower you and put you on this path, the more likely you are to leave and for me to not get anything out of that. And for also to really destroy a lot of value in the business because it's all the client relationships. The relationships yeah. yeah. So every time you have to change out somebody, you know, and for somebody else, it's a lot of like headaches and lost money and all that. So I hope as an industry that we can start doing a better job with that mentoring relationship. And, uh, and hopefully this Pronto Path concept is, is kind of um, providing a way for us to do that. Absolutely. Does that make any sense or? Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So to circle back to what we were talking about with, uh, you know, accountability and setting expectations, I think that's one of the, the key points here uh, to bring up is, you know, when, when you're talking to that person that has that entrepreneurial mindset and you want to keep them, right? You want to expand your world to keep them in your world and you're discussing what do you want, right? What is your why? You know, what's the ultimate vision of where you want to be? you know, you, you have to get them to create that, right? And tell you, and then your world has to be big enough to, to help them achieve that. And so when it comes to accountability, maybe somebody, you know, this was an example we brought up, brought up uh, they, they love cryptocurrency, right? They're working in your tax business. Uh, they're attracting, they're in those crowds of people that are, are trading and, and, and investing in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and all of the rest. And so maybe you give them, ownership of that division to grow that in your company as one of your niches, right? And, and so you give them that opportunity and then you set standards and you say, okay, here's what I expect for, for you to achieve that, but get them to, to tell you what that is, right? Say, hey, if you're going to own that and you're going to lead that division, what does success look like for you, right? Right. And it should be in alignment with what's going to get them what they want, right? Their personal freedom, their financial goals, right? And then you're going to, and then you're going to hold them accountable to that. So it'll be very clear and objective of did they hit that or not? And then they can grow into that role. And so it's not where they have some amorphous thing that they're trying to achieve and they think it's somewhere else that they got to go find, right? <laughs> yeah, and and... Everything that you just said right now is at a bigger corporation that had already kind of figured out that, hey, that's necessary. Like that's like a meeting, right? And before you have that meeting, you have to prepare and come in and be like, what are the questions I'm going to ask and all that. And so as a tax business owner, or if you're, even if you're an employee and say you're responsible for managing or mentoring other newer employees, you are accelerating yourself and you're going at a fast pace. 
So to sit down and actually put that together, you have to stop. You have to actually stop <laughs> going 100 miles per hour right. and sit down and say, how is this meeting that I have with this person going to go well? And not just be rushed and unprepared and getting a bunch of different calls from other people or, or be awkward and be all about money or whatever it is, right? There's a lot of different ways that when, when we're not, you know, you don't have an HR department a lot of times. If you're an independent tax pro, like most of our members are that are one, one to four people in your office, like there's no HR department to call and be like, give me all the forms that I'm supposed to. So, you know, just thinking through that. And um, I think that that's why at this acceleration stage, when you're adding team members, I would say HR and, and your, your people resources, you know, how to hire, how to fire, how to train, um, having some kind of pathway for people is the number one opportunity. And it's also the number one pitfall. Um, that that de- that can derail you. That's right. Because if you go back to previous episodes and steps uh, where we were talking about building trust and knowing who your 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 customers are, who your clients are, right? You're building that relationship. You should know your employees even better. You know why? Because if you take care of your employees, they're going to take care of the clients. Right. And so, so by taking care of your employees and understanding them the most, you're, you're automatically by default taking care of your clients because they're going to do a good job, right? And so that's why you have HR departments that do things like, you know, the strength finders test and the disc test and whatever that one's called or the uh, Myers-Briggs, right? Or the Colby test, right? So you have all these different tests that you can basically what they're doing is they're helping you understand who your employees are, their makeup, their mindset, what their uh, personalities are naturally so that you can put them in the right roles and get them on the right track. And then you understand whether they are that kind of empire builder or, or not, right? Because you need to know that. If you're trying to force somebody into something that they are, they're not, <laughs> you're going to have a tough time. <laughs> yeah, and I've done that so many times, you know, where I think that I think that this person's going to want this because that's how I am. And it actually has no relationship whatsoever to what they actually want. (laughs) And they may entertain you and think like, oh, that sounds good or whatever. Because you're the boss. I guess so. (laughs) See, I never never have been like that myself. So I, I, I think, oh, this person's, we have total open communication. And meanwhile, I didn't get any real communication because I'm just talking about you're, you're telling. what I'm... Yeah, I'm yeah, just like, this telling. is what I'm excited about. <laughs> you're excited, cool, get out there, go get them. And that's just not how it works. That's right. Um, and so those are the kind of things that you learn and when, when you're in an acceleration phase. And you know when you get out of that HR meeting or whatever, you're back to going 100 miles per hour. Right. So like, what's the framework for to check in with that person and see, you know, is the, how's this going and all that? And it, it's something where it's a, um, you know, it's a real challenge. So would you recommend, because I know the corporate environment, it can, it can be too structured and too much like, oh, I got to talk to HR again or whatever. Whereas just can't we just have like an authentic relationship? I'm sure there's a balance there. Like for our members and for people that are growing, um, say, a small tax business, like would you recommend that we get into getting some of that HR training, use some of those personality tests? Like how would you find that balance between not too corporate, you still a small business, but a small business that's doing things the right way. Right. So, so I definitely recommend, you know, weekly one-on-ones, weekly check-ins, just to make sure that they're on track with their goals and, and they're reporting on, you know, here's what I did last week. Here's what I plan to do next week. You know, did I accomplish last week what I said I would? Are there any adjustments? And really, you're just checking in with them to see how you can help right? You're not trying to beat them over the head with anything. You're just trying to say, hey, you know, I see in, you're in these areas you need help. Can I help you in those? Do we need to, you know, get some training, right? But I think if you're just coming into it and you don't really un- know who your employees, what, what your employees' strengths are or their makeup, I, I think making it a fun thing to kind of do these strength finder tests because, I mean, I've personally done the strength finders uh, and I've actually done all of them, but it's a very helpful thing to know about yourself. I mean, it should be exciting. It shouldn't be like, oh, this is an HR or corporate thing, right? This is actually understanding yourself so you can capitalize on your strengths, right? A lot of people, I was like tied up for years trying to strengthen my weaknesses and it really held me back. 
Because if you really understand yourself and you know what your strengths are, double down on those and those will take you way farther than, you know, trying to get your weaknesses up just to average. You know, you really find out what, what drives you. It helps, you know, employees that really understand what their strengths are, their, their, their bosses can call them out on those strengths and say, hey, you did a really good job. And they are prideful in that. They're, they can take pride in that. Because they feel that that's who they are. That's who they are. Yeah, that's their strength, their internal makeup. And it resonates internally with them because they, they know that, that, wow, that is my strength. Like, I'm good at that. I'm good at talking to clients. I'm good at, you know, whatever. I'm good at numbers. I'm good at whatever. And so you, you really uh, can build a good relationship with your staff, with your employees uh, over time by, by weekly checking in. I think there's a, a temptation at the, at the acceleration step where you're making so much money that it's like, hey, we're, we're, all, we're living our life now and I'm just going to go off and do my thing. And meanwhile, your employees are slaving away wondering, like, where's the boss? Like, is he, does he even care? Like, does he even see all this work that I'm doing? Right. And so to have that regular check in um, with that person is, is, is telling them that, you know, you do appreciate them. You, you are um, investing in them. You are asking every week, how can I help you? Are you thinking about getting into the tax business, but not sure where to start? Maybe you're not even sure the tax business is the right fit for you. And you don't want to invest a lot of money or time quite yet. You just want to get a taste of tax knowledge and see if you like it. Or maybe you're an experienced tax pro and you see someone else in your world who needs an introduction to the tax business, but you don't have time to teach all the basics. If either of those situations sound familiar to you, you need to check out the Pronto Tax School Basic Income Tax Course today. It's fun, entertaining, and gets you a real IRS credential. Go to taxpronation.com basic to find out more. So if we can summarize the HR side of it and what I've seen in, in being in a small, smaller family-owned tax business is that there's there's a spectrum, you know, between being too corporate where everything is has to be forms and and everything else versus having no process at all. And I think what what our listeners can take away from uh, from what you were saying, Jeff, is to have a process, you know, so, and, and it should be a documented process that you know how long it's going to take you as the owner. If you need, you know, other people to participate in that process, what's their role? And, um, you know, hey, we start people off by giving them this strength fighter, you know, uh, test to determine what, what their goals are. We have a meeting and then we do X, Y, Z, just some kind of process of adding people to your organization. And when you're in an acceleration fa- um, step of your business or your career, it's the thing that you say that you don't have time for that derails you. Right. So that's my point is that like you need to make time for it because you're most important. Like if I look at our business, by far the most important, you know, quote unquote asset of the business is the people. Right. And so every time that we've invested in developing people, you know, getting to know them, having them be part of the family, it always pays off. That's right. It, but it's something that when you're when you're really accelerating and you're you're making that good money and you know, um, you, you need to make time for it and make a priority and it's just some kind of orderly process, it trust me, is gonna keep you in a more uh, sane state of mind. Because that's what you feel like, I think, when you're accelerating your business is you like you got all these different controls that you need to be aware of all the time. And once you add in people, <laughs> they actually have their own lives too that they're trying to figure out. You're wait like, a wait a second, I'm not the only one struggling with these young kids. <laughs> they're actually doing that too, or they're taking care of their parent, or they actually have like why do you like all of a sudden have a life? Like you're like, <laughs> wait, you've got like feelings and you know, like what I said hurts your feelings or it, it's all those kind of things that when you add in the people, it gets more complicated. And so if you can order out some, some basic things of just like, I like what you said. And I think it's simple uh, to where it can still be efficient in, in our type of smaller tax business. And again, a lot of our offices are one to four people. Weekly check-in one-on-one. It sounds like it might be able to be done in 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Hey, right. highlights of the last week. Let's talk about why that was great. Great, great job. Uh, what's coming up for next week? Yep. 
you know, and maybe just a tip of how can I help you? So I think just even simple things like that is going to help you accelerate uh, in a way that, you know, works for your life. Yeah. I'll also say this too, you know, HR is not something that should feel like it just comes upon you. It's something that you're always doing. So you're always looking for the next empire builder that's going to come into your world. And you're always on the lookout for the, the right growth mindset, entrepreneurial mindset, right? You're, you're always looking for those, that, that talent. And you're developing that talent over time. It might be that you, you meet somebody, you see something in somebody, you develop a relationship with them, you stay in touch with them, right? And then at the, at the right time in their life, maybe that's the time you can bring them into your world right? But you're always on the lookout for those kind of people because it's not necessarily something that you can teach. Uh, I, I guess you can, but it's a lot easier, especially if you're a small business, to just find people that are naturally bent that way and, and that get it, right? So it might be five, 10 years later that you get that person to come on board with you. If it feels like you're just all of a sudden rushing, you're, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to get the people that you, know, you didn't do any background check on. You don't know who they are, where they came from. You don't know what their personality profile is. You don't know what their strengths are. You throw them into a role to deal with people and they're not a people person, right? It's kind of like we were talking about uh, earlier where you, know, you have a, a programmer that comes in and loves programming, loves code, and they're coding away all day. And then you say, wow, you're really good. We're going to put you as a manager over people. Why? <laughs> it's not, that has nothing to do with their role. And, it, and it, it just throws off so many people because that is the next step, right? In the, in the programming world is to manage programmers. Well, they're two diametrically opposite things. One's dealing with people, one's dealing with code. So, you know, just because you have a path in mind for people in your organization doesn't mean that's the right fit for them. And you need to know, know them enough to to know that. <laughs> so I think this acceleration sounded more and more fun. I know everybody's <laughs> so excited. Like, I want to do this. Uh, but it, it, you do have to enjoy the process to some degree, even as you have these, you know, three steps forward, two steps back type of interactions. And, and that's just part of being in, having relationships with people, whether it's clients, whether it's, uh, you know, team members, um, it, you know, got to keep nurturing those relationships, uh, growing ourselves and, um, and growing our team members. So um, that's, a, that's a touch on um, some of the HR stuff that is a major challenge of this acceleration phase. I did want to mention, as you are adding team member or two or, or three or whatever that looks like for you when you're accelerating your business, to keep in mind that having an admin assistant person or an executive assistant type of type of uh, role is going to be a very different role than that empire builder person that you're talking about that's going to go out and get clients or service clients and and say take half the tax returns that you're doing and they start doing them right and they're right. growing that's yeah. different than an than an executive assistant mm -hmm. um, so when you're accelerating you're going to notice that you don't have enough hours in the day to do everything that you're supposed to do. And then you need help very you know, acutely, let's say. <laughs> right. and, and then you start trying to pull in other tax preparers and people that are there to like make commission or, or build, build up their tax skills or whatnot and start asking them to do a lot of admin work mm. or taking them away from what they like because right. you're trying to like not spend more money on XYZ. And so that's why, you know, when we're building out the Pronto Path, the this elevation phase of getting your prices to a point where you can hire admin help, whether it's an answering service, whether like whatever size or attempt, just when it's super busy, whatever that looks like, what's going to relieve some of your, uh, you know, your duties, frankly, on the admin side as you're accelerating is going to be such a key uh, team member. So what does that role look like for you? And how do you distinguish that um, between people that you're expecting to come in and generate revenue, like generate enough, more than enough revenue to pay for themselves, mm -hmm. aka a tax professional, versus somebody that's there as a function of overhead and to make sure that you can go fast without crashing into a tree? If yeah, that makes sense. No, that totally makes sense. And you got to know that person's profile is different, right? They're going to want and like dealing with the administrative things. And they're going to have much different vision and dream for their life 
And But even for that person, what is it that you want? How can we get you there? Right. Yep. Um, and, and so you just mentioned, you know, last week's step uh, elevation, uh, step four on the Pronto path. Uh, is that the time to look at an, at an assistant or is the acceleration phase better? I think the acceleration phase, in my experience, is when you need it. You know, you really need it. And so that's like a lot of our members. Um, you guys will listen to this and we're kind of a frugal crew. You know, we kind of, we do do as much as we can with what we have. And then when we need something, we're usually prepared to make an investment, but we really have to feel like we need that. And so the acceleration phase is when you're like, there's no doubt I need an assistant. Like my, I'm, or I just need help. I'm not getting back to clients. My emails are backed up two, three days. And, and before I was responding in an hour. So you start to really notice a need, but I think the elevation phase is, is when you it would be great in hindsight, kind of as I was going through myself, you start thinking about like what do the numbers of my business need to look like for me to add that person? Well, I think you're starting to think about it, but at the acceleration step when all the money's flying in, you're you're just having a party. Like, yeah, let, I can offboard this now, I can afford this person. Whereas before you might be might have been a little more frugal, right? You're like, well, I don't know if I can afford that person. I'm still trying to raise my prices and grow my business, right? But at this stage, there's so much money coming in that I think the pitfall is money just flies out the window and yeah. you don't, you're not paying attention. <laughs> yeah, I think segueing from the, the HR side of it to money flying out the window is a good, <laughs> because those often go together. When this phase where you feel like you're going so fast in your career, and keep in mind, we talk about a lot of money coming in the door, Maybe it's not a hundred thousand or three hundred thousand or whatever, but maybe it's ten thousand, maybe it's twenty thousand. And and just a couple of years before or a year before, you were making two thousand. You know, so that to you is you're accelerating and that's that meaningful profit for you. Then you start hiring, then you start doing more marketing, and then you notice I am spending a lot more than I was. Am I really netting? And then you need to dig into your numbers and it's easy to not be digging into your numbers or watching what you're spending because you're going so fast. Again, it's the kind of thing of like, it'll take care of itself. You know, I'm growing top line revenue. And uh, that's one thing I give my dad a lot of credit for is that he, uh, you know, is, is very much looking at, at the end of the day, based on the amount of work that you put in, what are you making? And does it achieve that meaningful lifestyle that you want? And you're not sacrificing that because you get into growth for growth's sake and you start spending more money to acquire more clients. But maybe those clients are the type of clients that need year-round help. And a lot of people, that's not what they got in the tax business to do. So you have to kind of you know navigate that. And, and spending tons of money is definitely a major... Uh, thing that happens in acceleration because you start seeing I can afford it. I can afford this marketing consultant that's you know three grand a month. And I really, but are you watching what you're getting for that? Are you do you have reasonable expectations? Those are all those kind of special learning experiences that you get to enjoy. So, so you're saying when you're making all that money in the acceleration phase, you're not really checking your your books on a regular basis. There's a high potential for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's something I was I was joking with you the other day and I don't mind sharing with, with you guys too is I mean, I've been self-employed for in some fashion for almost 20 years, which is kind of crazy and uh you know, I just sitting down now and important realizing the importance with my business coach of budgeting. Like actually building out a budget and you know, I'm like oh, this is amazing. Like you actually could know what you're going to spend like that <laughs> month like before the month even happened. <laughs> And and I look back, you know, on my career and when things didn't turn out how I wanted them, it was a lot related to not planning things out because I could be very spontaneous and creative. And I, I like that about my business personality. But taking the time to either have somebody else work with on the budget side, on the planning side, of uh, valuing that and setting aside time to do that. It's even like you brought into the company us doing, you know, planning Thursdays. You have to be open to doing new things at this phase because what got you to this point is not going to get you to the next point. That's right. So as we all know, it's tough to change. It's tough to change your personality. And so for me, I was always... I know how to generate revenue. 
Like I could feel like I could be dropped into any city or whatever, and I could find out this is a problem that people are having. I could solve it. Here could be an offer I could get. Then I could go talk to somebody and help them out. Then they could pay me. I could figure that out. But when it comes to having net profit at the end of the day, it takes a lot of discipline and looking at... like I I did a big cost-cutting thing at the beginning of this year. And I was amazed at all the software as a service things that I had on there that I was either barely using, just not using at all, and just sheer not paying attention and just paying off the balance. As you grow and as you accelerate... I don't want this to turn into like a counseling session or whatever, but <laughs> it happens. Yeah. You know, because you see, uh, like with me too, is I, I see so much good in so many products and services that people have. I'm like, it's so great you're doing that. Like, yeah, I'll sign up. But what if I don't have time to use that? That's right. Or I don't, I don't have another team member that's going to take that and run with that. Mm-hmm. You still pay for it, right? All right. Well, you know, you're in you're in the soft, software as a service, uh, you know, model, and yeah. it's such a brilliant model. But it draws on your credit card every month, whether you well, use it or not. That's why it's a brilliant model. <laughs> but no, I was gonna say um, what you what you were saying reminded me of you know, money is a lot like time. You budget your time by scheduling on a calendar. Like you know, ahead of time, I'm gonna be here at this place at this time doing this thing. Um, you can do the same with money, right? So. I think what we're saying is the discipline at this step when there's a lot of money coming in is to st- still schedule and budget that money like you would time, right? You, you, you budget, uh, block out time like we've been doing and you block out, here's how much I'm, I should be spending on each one of these things. And then you track it because if you don't track it, you don't know what's going on, right? So I would say that at this stage to prevent the wheels from coming off, that's a good discipline uh, to put in place. And, and ideally, you've already had that process in your business where you're checking the books regularly and, and, and budgeting. Uh, if you don't have it at, by this stage, then it's a good time. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's, a, it's an urgency and it's something that it will need to happen in order for you to accelerate in a way that's still enjoyable. You know, and, and where you don't lose control of what's going on um, and stay in control of your business, uh, stay in control of your career. Tax pros have seen it coming for years. The entrepreneurial wave is here. And that means more opportunity to do corporation, S-corp, and LLC business tax returns. With the new tax law, they're even more complex and in demand. Professionals who increase their skill set in this area can expect to become more profitable and successful. Pronto Tax School has the perfect online training course for you called Business Tax Verified with CPA Adam Shea. Find out more at taxpronation.com slash business. So you had some funny stories in the office that were happening during the stage that I think really <laughs> kind of highlight some of the pitfalls. Do you want to share any of those? Because I know, because I know, want money is is was one of the funny things when you had so much money you didn't know what to do with it. But then also, kind of getting into your lifestyle at that point. Yeah. So let's talk about the money first because <laughs> that, it's you know we we used to and this was back say when pe- more people would pay with cash than than happens now. But it was always one of the the best things of when we were in this acceleration phase. And I remember I was working with my original mentor, Jesse, uh, in our Monrovia office. And, you know, we were able to triple the size of our our revenues, you know, within a few years. And so really accelerating our business and just remembering those big days, you know, where it's like made five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars or fifteen thousand dollars in a day. And then being able to sit there and and, and count the money, you know, <laughs> there's something very satisfying and tangible about that. It's not like that anymore. Most of it's now credit card slips. Um, but you know, we, just getting into like, you know, my uncle was always telling me, you know, Andy, you got to bank face the money because I would put it all jumbled up like a rookie, right? Where, but, but bank facing it means right that you put the faces of the money the same way, and so then when you put it into the bank. It reads through correctly and and you know prevents any issues. So it's totally an owner type of thing to say. It's like when you're putting <laughs> together a deposit, bank face the money, right? And that was something that I learned from my uncle. But just just having that experience of like people trusted us enough today and they valued us enough that it just gave us all this money. 
And like we just made more money today than a lot of businesses make in a year. Right. You know? And so the lifestyle stuff that comes into it, which can be a little less, uh, you know, pleasurable, is what does your lifestyle look like to be able to have those type of days? You know, and I remember during this time, I was driving from in Los Angeles traffic from the west side out to the east side, essentially. And very dangerous roads, like very dangerous, you know, so that, and, and very eating in the car, like getting <laughs> McDonald's. And I remember I was, you know, getting like McGriddles. And like, it was just like, <laughs> that was like that concoction of like a pancake mixed with like a bacon sandwich. And it's just like, <laughs> this is like so wrong, you know, but I need to get to the office at uh, 5 a.m., because I'm going to do X, Y, Z. I'm going to put in the deposit then. I'm going to do... Uh, you know, I'm accelerating. Like This yeah. is just what I do, right? So health kind of goes out the window. It's just 24-7 grind, hustle. I mean, you just feel like you are like a savage beast. And you're just like, I'm in like tax mode. I'm just going to like... <laughs> I just got to grind this out, you know? And then, so you, you, there's, there's other things that can happen, you know? And, and for instance, like when, when Jesse and I were, were at the office, we had this one particular period where we were so busy and we were cashing so consistently that like everybody that walks in is like, they're getting closed. Like it's guaranteed. Like there's no, it, it, if they have a couple of questions or whatever, all that's going to happen is going to result to them paying us. It was like guaranteed <laughs> because we were both just like, going off each other, playing off each other. It was like... In the zone. We're just crushing it. Yeah, like, what are you going to do? You're not going to... So we were so into that. And it was like, hey, we got to get it while the getting is good. You know, tax season's only about 100 days. And now it seems like they've even lessened it more so. But we were so bad at taking care of the basic functions of the office because like our dumpster was out around the way, around the plaza. We weren't even taking out the trash. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean, that sounds like disgusting, <laughs> uh, but we didn't have any, not to generalize that all women are good at cleaning, but we didn't have any women in the office to say like, guys, this is disgusting. Like, what are you doing? This is like a bachelor it's a pad. dorm room. Yeah, yeah, it's like it turned into a dorm room. And I remember we actually had bags of trash like stacked up oh, Lord. in the back and it caused like a fruit fly infestation. Oh, man. So... We- <laughs> We had, uh, you know, we had, I told you I was going to keep it real with you guys on this podcast. I mean, uh, I'm not, it's like, I like how we're talking about watching Tony Robbins. Uh, I'm not your guru. Like, I'm not your guru either. Bro. <laughs> I'm just here to keep it real with you and say, this is what happens sometimes when you're accelerating, right? Is you may have woken up in the morning, got two McGriddles, you know, went through this drive through <laughs> You know, you're about you're about eight cups of coffee deep. And then you're realizing like you're trying to ignore in your mind the fact that there's fruit flies on your face and on your client's face and try to act like that's somehow okay. And by the time you really realize that and have accepted that, you've got a problem. Like you need to do a deeper cleaning. You need to get other chemicals involved to get, you know. So just remember that and, and saying like seeing people waving their faces and then being like, <laughs> Like I'm still gonna pay you, but like I don't know if I can pay you 200 because there's like a lot of flies on my face. And we were joking around that it was like, I mean, it was turning into like a third world type of <laughs> scenario, and it really wasn't good for the 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 health of the office, let alone us. So I mean, we we might be in a situation where we're dealing with that. And then like the way that we would take a break is like, let me get outside the office and walk across to Burger King and nothing against McDonald's or Burger King or anything like that. But like if you're having McDonald's for breakfast and then Burger King for lunch (laughs) and you're eating Taco Bell for dinner. (laughs) Uh, Do they even have Taco Bell in LA? (laughs) Oh yeah. Taco Bell is huge in LA. So that, that would be a normal thing. Like that would be normally what would happen is like that exact dietary thing. And not only that, but the way that you're eating, like it's like you're like wa- like walking from working. the yeah. parking lot and walking across, like stuffing something in your face and like you know wash off your it, pe- people that have been through tax season they know how that can happen. Right. So it's just like don't judge me, you know. It's just it is what it is. But you're when you're in tax season and when you're when you're in this acceleration phase, you are absorbing a lot of other people's stress and there and you're dealing with so many people. 
Mm-hmm. You know, you're dealing with now you're dealing with a lot of salespeople. Mm-hmm. So people are calling you, they know that you're like you're starting to do well. You know, you need this XYZ. So it takes a lot of energy just to be like to tell them no. Because a lot of salespeople, as you know, is like they're very good at what they do. And mm-hmm. so it's like, when's a good time to follow up? And it's like, frankly, none it's never a good time to follow <laughs> up. Like you know, I was talking to a client about that that particular question. That's so great. And and he was just like, so I started, he's telling me about how he was coming up with it's a good time to follow up when hell freezes over. <laughs> or it's a good time to follow up in a thousand years. <laughs> it's like don't so between clients, you know, not eating right, not getting enough exercise, all that, the acceleration phase, it's like exciting. There are things that you need to be careful of. I guess that could summarize matters. Right. So, so, I mean, this is the stage that we're at. I mean, is that recommended? Is that normal? Is that, should people be like, yeah, that's, I'm going to embrace the, the chaos at this step? Or, or is there a better way to do it? Yeah. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a really good question. And I think it is something, Jeff, that people do accept. Like a lot of people do accept that that's how it is. The thing is that time and, age and actually living that type of lifestyle, it sorts itself out so quickly that like if you're drinking a lot, you know, you're, you know, getting into drugs, you're working so much and all that, it takes a a heavy toll on the person that's doing that. And it is going to drive you to have to make a change. Right. You know, one way or another. So I what I would encourage people is hey, if you're in this acceleration phase and you're kind of recognizing Hey, I haven't taken the trash out of my office and during taxi, like, I don't have a process to do that or someone to help me with that or whatever that looks like. Now, I think the time to start taking some actions is now. And, and sometimes those can be incremental actions. Like, I remember, for instance, um, with Jesse and I, that we started covering for each other to just like go take a walk, you know, and not, and, and we were so obsessed with client service that like, we always prided ourselves on like answering every call, like answering every email, all that. But but just to carve out that time and say, hey man, you look a little bit tired, get out and take a walk. It's a nice sunny day. You won't get any calls. Any calls that you get, I'll take care of it. Yeah, that's good. But so, so you're things, saying so you know? you're saying that, you know, if the salesman calls to take out the trash and sell you on trash services, you need to be uh, rested enough and mindful enough and present enough to realize, oh yeah, I do need that. And yeah. I do need to slow down. <laughs> yeah, I do need to understand and pace myself because I don't want to wreck my life. I don't want to wreck my relationships. I, I, I did this, my why at the beginning of this show, we talked about, you know, grounded in your why, grounding yourself in your why, you know, did I sign up for this? Is this the lifestyle that I signed up for? And so really understanding that will help you you know, get the right people on your team so that you can scale up without having to go wheels off and go, you know. <laughs> and I think, I think the nature of getting really busy in the tax business being that it's kind of when, like a lot of businesses, frankly, like when it rains, it pours, is that there is going to be a certain chaos and craziness. Like even if you look at somebody like, um, you know, Adam Shea up the street, very successful CPA, five other CPAs working at his company, at the end of the day, like if if I talk to him after tax season, he's going to be a little bit tired. He's going to be saying, you know, like, hey, I probably want to, um, you know, get get back working out more, right? So right. There, there's a certain thing of just it is what it is. There's a balance to it, yeah. Right. But you know, getting through that point and having some kind of plan to have that not be your existence, I think there's some people out there that are probably listening to this right now and saying, like, I don't know what to do about that. Um, and maybe that's a good time to talk about, you know, business coaching or consulting. This phase of acceleration sometimes is when those things start to be appealing because you actually don't know what to do. Right. You knew what to do to kind of get to this point or you figured it out. But you, you, a lot of times you feel you don't actually have the knowledge and the resources and the support to handle this. Yeah. And that's kind of scary. So, so do you stop accelerating? You know, do you take your foot off the gas and just cruise? Do you stop taking clients? I mean, these are all kind of personal questions, I guess, you know, in your business. I think that a lot of people do take that approach. You'll find a lot of tax pros that they've reached their client limit and they're not taking new clients, period. 
at the same time, there's a certain, you know, about life or about business that it's kind of like that shark that if you're not swimming, you're dying. Mm-hmm. And so if you're not growing, what's going on, right? Is that, is that fulfilling to you as your human spirit? And so people, maybe they are still growing, but not taking new clients. Like they're growing their relationship with those clients or whatever. But what does that growth look like to you to say, you know, I'm going to handle this in a way that works for me, but I'm not going to give up and just accept not growing and not trying to reach my potential. Right. So, and I think that's, that's something that if you have a business coach or, um, or a mentor that you connect with that, I think that's, or even just a friend who, who kind of maybe has been through that same, same type of situation. That's where getting outside of your own head, I think, and getting a different perspective can really be helpful. Right. And if you're a part-timer, you know, you're doing it as a side hustle, you know, this could become even more important, right? To really understand, you know, what are my goals relative to the math? And just not the financial numbers, but the, the time numbers. Exactly. You know, how much time am I going to dedicate to this? And how many clients does that equal? What type of niche am I in? You know, how much time am I spending per customer? Uh, how much uh, does, am I netting each customer, e- each type of service that I'm offering? Uh, really running your numbers to see what is your max capacity. You might not even know what that is. But if you sit down and just plan it a little bit, you might actually understand, you know, I have a capacity to do 1,000 clients this tax season, right? So when you're pushing up beyond 1,000, you're going, okay, wheels are coming off. I already knew this going in. And so you really did some some planning here. Yeah, and that, that planning aspect is something that, again, there's certain things in our industry that we can really improve on. And I think that's that's one of those things, you know, is, is planning and thinking ahead. Actually, there are only 24 hours in a day. <laughs> and, you know, I am married. I do have a family or I do, you know, have a parent that I want to see regularly. And, uh, you know, when you're away for three or four months and totally absent and gone, there's a lot of different things that can go pretty sideways pretty quick. Uh, so I, I know, like I said, I, this is probably sound like a huge pleasure cruise that everybody's like, I want to accelerate like as fast <laughs> as I can. But just pulling it back to like making that meaningful profit. Why is it meaningful? You know, why is what do you what do you really get out of it? Um, that that's making it a meaningful profit level for you. And then um, you know, it, th- I think that there's nothing wrong with realizing I don't need to keep growing and keep growing and keep growing just for that sake. Like if it's attached to something that I want to achieve, I'll go through that period of time to do that. And that's fine. But if you feel like you're getting just addicted to that, stepping back and saying, I may need to get some help for, for dealing with this phase of my business. The last thing you want, and, and, but the, one of the most common things that happens is to be accelerating in the wrong direction. Yeah. That's true. And then you realize it, but you're like, well, it'd be tough to turn around now because I got all these obligations and just bought the new car. And, you know, I, I, you know, I ran into like a young, just to give you an example, again, to try to relate it to, to people that, you know, are listening or to real situations. I ran into this young man who's a very ambitious person, was building a team, building a tax business, and totally in the acceleration phase. You know, I'd gone from, Revenues 250K to 500K in a year. Nice. Yeah, very nice. When Ashley was talking to the person though outside, I I could identify because I've been there. It's like you could tell, you know, was an athletic guy, you know, like good looking guy, et cetera. Get it like just the way that he looked was like he's like out of shape, right? And he's stressed out. Mm -hmm. So when he started actually identifying on that level, he was trying to ask me like, what do you do? It's was like, you know, and I'm like, man, you, you, you've got to prioritize the exercise. Like I can tell it's like, what, Oh, you like to play soccer. Like you got to prioritize that, man. You're growing your business or whatever, but like, you know, your quality of life is still important. And and I could just recognize that because I've been there, you know, I've been there where it's like, you don't go to any social gatherings for, Four months. And if you're at a social gathering, you're probably going to be answering tax questions or like doing tax <laughs> returns in the back room, you know, whatever it might be. Because people see, man, this guy's got the momentum. Like he's, 
he's the way to go. And you, you have spent and invested so much to get to that point. You like, can't say no. It's a badge of honor. You're like, this is, this is my job. I, this is, yep. I just happen to be, you know, this is just what I do and I'm going to do it. Um, but, you know, to, to, that, to that young man's credit is that we met at a seminar that was all about developing your tax business like to that next level. And so he was taking actions to be able to accelerate in a way that's going to be sustainable. So I didn't have any, any you know, doubt that, hey, this, this person's going to figure it out. Right. Um, but just in that moment, it's, you know, you're at a high speed and you're, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of figuring it out as you go, you know? Yeah, no, it's great. And it's a huge accomplishment, right? It's a huge milestone step to, to reach uh, this stage. So it sure is. Uh, if you're at this stage and you're listening, congratulations. It's awesome. Uh, all we wanted to do in this episode is really kind of frame the pitfalls and uh, things to look out for so that you can have the best uh, experience at this step. Yeah. And, and also um, with, you know, getting focused on those pitfalls and those, uh, those things that will come up don't forget to enjoy the ride because it's actually, like Jeff said, it's a wonderful accomplishment to get to this point where your business is speeding along and it's really, really fun. The more you enjoy it, even through the, the, the times where it's not perfect, uh, the better off you'll be. And the better off everyone around you will be because people don't want to see you just suffering. And, and you know, like they want to see you, most people want to see you uh, grow in your business in a way that uh, leads to a better quality of life for you and for everybody else. Awesome. Well, Andy, that was a fun, fun episode, fun time. Thanks for. I'm gonna need to get counseling just from <laughs> <laughs> reliving some of those special experiences. But at the same time, when I think about it, I think that was awesome. Yeah, I think that was fun. That was real. You know, we kept it real, and uh, that that counts too. Good, good. Well, awesome. Well, we'll look forward to uh, talking next week. I have been Jeff Dolan, and I've been Andy Fry. Thank you so much for listening. All of the show notes for this episode can be found at taxpronation.com slash five. We have actually created an infographic of the Pronto Path so you can see all of the steps in one place. Go ahead and download that at taxpronation.com slash five as well. We hope this episode made your life a little bit easier and more profitable. Join us next week as we continue down the Pronto Path to talk about step number six, stabilization develop at least one profitable service other than tax preparation that works well with tax preparation. Take care.